Hello, let me tell you a little bit about me. My name's Simon Bennett and I'm an O'Reilly author. I guess there are three things that you might want to know about me. What's my background? What training experience do I have? And what do I know about UML? While I've worked in IT for almost 30 years, I originally studied Japanese at university and have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Oriental Studies. After leaving university, I started working with community groups and worked in a variety of youth and community roles for a number of years. During this time, I became professionally qualified as a youth and community worker and a social worker. So how did I end up in IT? Well, back in the 1980s, I was working for a community transport operator and began to use PCs and one of the early databases that ran on PCs to manage the operations and finances of the organisation. I also studied systems analysis and programming on a VAX running the VMS operating system at my local college. This led to a university research job to develop software for community transport and dial -a ride operators. They're charitable or not-for-profit organisations that provide transport for community groups or bus and taxi services for people with disabilities. We used the PIC operating system, a mini computer operating system that also ran on PCs. These were the days of green screen terminals, so a PC AT class machine could support several users. From there, I went on to work for a small PIC software company as an analyst programmer and eventually as a project manager. I remember reading an article back then comparing two new mini computer operating systems, PIC and Unix, and debating which one would come to predominate. I think we all know the answer to that one now. In the 1990s, I started work at what was then Leicester Polytechnic as a lecturer, teaching systems analysis and design, databases and decision support. Leicester Polytechnic became De Montfort University during the 90s. I left the university to work for Ericsson Intracom in the UK as an information systems consultant with a particular remit to implement a knowledge management system for hardware and software engineers. I then went on to work for a company called Celacio as a systems architect and later an enterprise architect. After Celacio, I worked as head of IT in a couple of public sector bodies before I decided to take the plunge and become a self-employed consultant and trainer. I've been involved in training for many years. My first training role was back in the 80s when I worked for Derby Community Transport and was responsible for training the volunteers who worked with passengers with disabilities. Training people how to push a wheelchair and get up and down steps without throwing the occupant out was very different from the kind of training I do now. But practical experience is everything. It's not something you can teach without actually doing it. I trained people in PIC data basic programming during the late 80s and recently have returned to programming training with a course in Java for a company in Ireland. Teaching students isn't quite the same as training professionals, but I spent nine years at the university and as well as teaching and research, I was involved in commercial training. We ran a course on internet opportunities for business in the very early days of the World Wide Web when Mosaic was still the only graphical browser around. I also trained people in the use of video conferencing technology for teaching and for business. That's me in the photo in the days when I had more hair. More recently, I've delivered training in UML for a variety of organisations, including a city council and the wealth management arm of a UK-based global bank. I've also trained people in requirements engineering and in Spark Systems Enterprise Architect, the UML modelling tool that you'll see in action in this course. As I said, in the 1990s, I started work at what was then Leicester Polytechnic as a lecturer, teaching systems analysis and design, databases and decision support. Leicester Polytechnic became De Montfort University during the 90s, a time when object-oriented languages were becoming more widely used, and people were producing a variety of different notations to model systems built in an object-oriented fashion. For teaching students, we had to make a choice between several competing modelling notations. Then, in 1996, Rational Software Corporation launched the Unified Modelling Language and proposed it to the Object Management Group as a standard in January 1997. We adopted UML in our teaching, but found that the books about UML tended to focus on the notation and not how to use it in the analysis and design of a system. So together with a couple of colleagues, I decided to write a book on object-oriented systems analysis and design using UML. And that's the title of the first book I wrote on the subject, which was published by McGraw-Hill in 1999. That book is now in its fourth edition and has been translated into Spanish and Chinese and still sells widely around the world. A couple of years later, I wrote a second book for McGraw-Hill, which was published in the Shaum's Outline series as Shaum's Outline of UML. It's a tutorial guide to UML with plenty of practical examples. I now provide training on topics such as requirements analysis, UML and Java programming, and deliver consultancy on business process modelling and improvement and carry out architecture reviews of systems. 
I'm certified in TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework, and in Archimate, a notation for modelling the architecture of businesses and their systems. If you want to contact me about this course, you can get in touch with me as scbennettuml at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.